Hello, Longhorns. My name is Ulysses Chavez, and I'm one of the graduate assistants here at the Longhorn Center for Academic Equity. And today we will be covering scholarships and fellowships. So here we go. So this presentation will be specifically for um, UT Austin system. And I do wanna speak upon my own experiences uh, as well. So just so you know, that's a bit of a review of what we're gonna go over. Here is a roadmap. We're gonna go over the types of scholarships, the recommendations, essays, strategies in applying, uh, study abroad scholarships and fellowships. So first thing to note about scholarships is that you should narrow down your competition. What you should think about is the major or the college you belong to, the university, um, any identities or affinity groups that you are in, for example, um, your ethnicity, your racial background, your religion, your gender expression, um, and you want to use those certain identities you hold or groups you belong to. For example, if you're from the military, again, if you have an ethnic racial background, um, a student, if you are a student or you have a parent with disability, if you're a first gen student, low income, maybe a specific town that you have, that you're bilingual, part of the LGBTQ plus community, a native Texan, et cetera. You want to search local, then state, then the national level. So you wanna make your scope small and then big. So again, the first question you, do, you should ask yourself is what affinity groups do I identify with? There are two types of scholarships. We have internal and external. Internal scholarships are scholarships that are offered from the institution you attend. And you can only use this money at the school that offered it to you. So for example, um, if you win a scholarship that is internal, you can use it toward your tuition at the school. If you have an external scholarship, <clears throat> That means that a scholarship would come from outside. Uh, an example of this is the Hispanic Scholarship Fund. Usually they send you a check and you're able to use that money uh, in whichever way you'd like. So ask yourself, what types of scholarships have you or would you apply for? It's very important to not self-select. So what does that mean? That means that you shouldn't uh, be too hard on yourself when you opt out of doing a scholarship because you don't think you meet the qualifications, the award is too large and or too little, the award is too competitive, or you don't think you're a good writer. A key point to note is that any scholarship that requires an essay usually has less applications. And what that means is that you have less competition. You should note the importance of requirements. Always look at what the requirements are. There are several ways that a committee may uh, evaluate you. For example, they may look at your academics, which means your GPA, your involvement. So any volunteering that you've done, student leadership, organizations, an essay or project submission, and usually recommendation letters. So recommendation letters from your teachers, professors, employers, advisors, etc. There are different types of scholarship amounts and they vary. It's advised to not ignore small scholarships, even as small as $100, because they can add up over time. And you can only receive one scholarship out of every dozen you apply for, but you should still apply. Look for scholarships that have you complete a task such as essays or to create something. Most students do not want to write an essay. And again, this limits your application pool. You should always also recycle your essay. And what that means is that you need to be organized and to save the old essays. So ideally, you should have a folder with your personal statement, previous essays and their questions specifically, uh, an updated resume, 
and your recommendation letters. These are some typical essay questions you may find in an, op in an application. Uh, so for example, tell me about yourself. Uh, have you pre previously received this scholarship? What has been your biggest challenge during your current year and how have you overcome it? That one's a pretty popular question. List the goals you have set for yourself. Uh, in what ways will receiving this scholarship uh, impact your overall college experience? So these are some pretty popular questions that you ideally already want to have an answer to, or at least an idea. Again, scholarship applications usually have identical questions like these or a variance of the ones that were mentioned. Some further tips here is to answer the question and essay fully. Proofread and revise. You can use the University Writing Center. You also want to outline and organize your thoughts, even if it comes from bullet points. You want to give specific examples on why you need the scholarship. So for example, maybe it might be because of your housing. You want to personalize your essay and be passionate. Share your story. Do not be generic. You want to write about something of interest to you. So perhaps how you ended up being interested in your major and what you plan to do with that. You also wanna talk about your impact on other people. A more logistical tip here, if you have a word limit, word limit or character limit, uh, it may not copy and paste directly exactly as you'd like. So it's best to pull up bullet point and string together with as little wording as possible. If you have a scholarship that requires letters of recommendations, you should always ask your professor and or an employer whether they can write a great letter of recommendation. However, you wanna be sure you've already built a relationship with this person and research them. Look at their biography and you should ask yourself, is there any overlap with my own interests and this particular person's interests? The recommendation should be relevant to the scholarship sponsor's goal. And you should provide the recommender with a copy of your accomplishments, your resume, and a link to the application you are filling out. Do not give your recommender the burden of finding this information. It is much easier for them to write a letter recommendation for you optimistically and gladly if you provide these. You also want to thank the recommender for writing the letter for you. So here are a couple of examples of some essay responses uh, that we have. We have a total of, I believe, three or four. So the question here is, what has been your biggest challenge during your current year and how have you overcome it? Or how are you working toward overcoming it? So this question is asking you to evaluate yourself. And what this question is trying to also see is, how well you are in making progress in um, that growth mindset. So let's look at the response. The transition from high school to college was abrupt. I enjoy how much more free time I have now with classes taking up less of my day, but it has been a double-edged sword. My biggest challenge has easily been time management. Between lectures, assignments, personal life, and professional endeavors, I find my days ending before I realize it. I'm not an unorganized person per se, but I have struggled with structuring my time for a while. To combat this, I've begun using apps to manage my day and send me reminders of important items on my itinerary. Time is the one thing that is equally distributed to everyone. Because of this, I believe that being intentional with your time is the best way to improve yourself. Since implementing the use of calendars, I have kept better track of my daily tasks and find myself falling behind schedule less often. However, time cannot only be spent being productive. There is time for rest and self-care as well. To overcome my challenge, I need to strike a balance between the two. I'm not there quite yet, but each day I work to bridge the gap. 
So what is excellent about this response is that this particular person um, pretty straightforwardly answered the question over what their biggest challenge is, at least here in a sentence. And they did more than just answer the question. They also provided a little bit about themselves, how they utilize specifically apps and how they've made a bit of progress, but they're pretty self-aware in the fact they still have um, some more to go. So this response is great because again, it addresses the question and it does a little more. And also it ends on a positive note, a pretty self-aware positive note at that. Let's look at some more examples. Example two, this question is list of goals you have set for yourself while at UT and how they will prepare you for your future career. So this is a big one. Let's see what had, they had to say. One of the main reasons I chose to major in government is the career plans I have for my future. My desire to work in government comes from serving people, to let the people understand government and how impactful and meaningful their voices are. Therefore, I have taken the task of starting small here at UT. I want to be able to bring something positive to the UT community to start building up my resume for the future. I understand the expertise and experience one needs to be considered for government positions, and I believe UT can provide these to me. For example, I'm currently in a solo, there it is, student government agency, and my committee group has decided to adopt a creek we will take care of and clean up. For the following semesters, I plan to remain active in student government and maybe apply for officer positions as ambition as necessary if you plan to work in the government. Additionally, obtaining experience in this field can be challenging, but UT has the answer to that with the Archer program. Therefore, my current goals are to take advantage of all the service-based opportunities UT must impact the community. An impact that will benefit the school and its students while providing me with the experience necessary to be successful in my career path. So what was excellent about this response is that they provided straight away what their major was and why it was important to them and how they have been active in that role and how UT specifically can help them. Specifically, they named the Student Government Agency and the Archer Program here at UT. Let's take a look at other responses. All right, here's this question. In what ways will receiving a scholarship from our center impact your overall college experience? So the response here says, the main thing this scholarship would impact would be my financial struggles. I wouldn't have to worry as much about the money and my focus would go straight to my studies. I don't want to keep waking up every day and thinking if I'm going to have enough for another payment. I just want to focus on myself and my studies. I work hard every day to afford coming here and the scholarship would put me more at ease when it comes to money problems. This would be applied to my tuition bill and other costs I need to pay. So pretty straightforward answer. Uh, scholarships are money. So it makes sense that this person mentioned that this specific scholarship would alleviate financial struggles. Let's look at one more response. Why are you applying for this program? What are your career goals? So the response here says, conservatism and traditional gender roles were at the forefront of my upbringing. This is a very powerful first sentence. They go on to further describe themselves. It says here, as a gay Mexican American, I underwent a deconstruction of my familial belief system that was heavily encoded with religious bias after years of suffering from a burdening sense of cognitive dissonance. I accepted the myriad of emotions that I was raised to repress in the name of masculinity and alleged strength, to find a genuine connection and a sense of authenticity with my ethnicity and culture. This connection was not laced with machismo expectations and religion was reclaimed through mindfulness providing the ability to express empathy onto variants of experience felt by others. This fueled my passion for studying the underlying psychological mechanisms that fuel sentiments of prejudice 
discrimination, and oppression that are both externalized and internalized by humans. So at this point of this response, they did a very, very great job at describing who they are, where they came from, and why what they're studying is important. Let's keep going. I'm highly interested in studying the nuances of reaction formation and how often that translates into areas of fat phobia, homophobia, sexism, and racism. I hope to be able to broaden my knowledge through working alongside professors such as Dr. So-and-so to add to the concept, excuse me, conversation about fostering anti-racist tendencies through pathological pathological, thank you, work earlier on in human development. So this person provided where they came from, the characteristics of which the field they are studying, what specific characteristics they want to pursue and study, and an opportunity that aligns with their career goal or interest. This is an excellent response. And again, I want to point to the fact that this first sentence was a real hook. Let's talk about some common application mistakes. So missing deadlines or doing it last minute is a pretty common mistake. Failing to proofread the application. I know I have done that in the past where I accidentally add an A or I miss some spacing or I misspell a word. Failing to follow directions. For example, you ignore the essay length or don't catch that there has to be a max number of recommendations. You omit required information. You apply for an award when you don't qualify. So for example, I am a graduate student. Um, there are certain scholarships that I could apply for, but I do not meet most scholarships for only undergrads. Failing to apply for an award for which you are eligible. Failing to tailor the application to the sponsor. Or writing a boring essay and not following the prompt. Again, you want to avoid this by being yourself and being very clear about where you came from, what your goals are, and staying relevant to whatever the question is. You also want to be aware of scholarship scams. If you have to pay money to get money, it is probably a scam. You should also never invest more than a postage stamp to get information about scholarships or to apply for a scholarship. Nobody can guarantee that you'll win a scholarship. And you do not give out personal information like bank account numbers, credit card numbers, or social security numbers. So, most of you asked where you start your search, and there are many sources. In no particular order, you can look at all of these sources here by asking your employer, a lo your local bank, your churches, maybe your community organizations, for example, Lions Club, your individual college, maybe your volunteer opportunity, organizations that you're involved in, programs such as AmeriCorps, in the financial aid and scholarship office. You could also do an online search. For those of you that are at UT Austin, there are scholarships available by your college. So you heard that right. If you are a student at UT College, sorry, UT Austin, your college does provide its own scholarship program. Uh, for example, I was an undergrad in uh, liberal arts. So I would go on to the College of Liberal Arts scholarship site. Again, each college has their own and they look a bit different. And you can see here the types of scholarships and when they are due. As you can see here, they have for both grad and undergrad. And you can see when the deadline is. And they may even have a description of what the scholarship is, or maybe what it requires. In this case, you have that information and you also have how much it is worth. So again, you wanna take a look at the individual 
scholarship sites that your specific college has. You never know what they have. Um, it is scholarship season, so it's best to do this before, but this is a great way to start. And again, I did link these scholarship sites for each college here, and I'll provide that also in the description. So more places where you can look for scholarships is Texas One Stop database. So that's what this looks like. You have a finder here where you pick your uh, year or where you came from and your residency. And then you have here a list of the scholarships that you would therefore qualify. You also have Texas and Federal Index of Scholarships. AIE Scholarship Database, Peterson Scholarship Index, finaid.org, and College Board. I want to remind you guys that it's best to look for scholarships by going inward, outward. So what that means is that you go from local to national. So again, a good first step, if I were you guys, were to, is to look at scholarships within my college and then perhaps look at what I qualify for uh, with these federal and state financial aid databases. So again, just to reiterate, you wanna start here with where your major is, maybe your identity interests, your department, then your college, then UT Austin, and then Austin, Travis County, Texas, or the USA. So for example, in my case, when I was an undergrad here, I was a government major, so I would look at my departmental scholarship site, the government, um, sorry, the Department of Government, and then I would look at my department, and then my college, the College of Liberal Arts, UT Austin, and then Austin, Travis County, Texas, USA. A current scholarship that is due is the UT Continuing Student Scholarship application. The information is here. Any current UT undergrad can apply for this scholarship, uh, which is due on March 15th. And again, here is a scholarship finder I was mentioning earlier. And here is a link I also provided that provides you more details about if you're an incoming student or maybe you know somebody who's gonna be an incoming student, a continuing and transfer student, your college, school, and depart departmental scholarships, and outside and private scholarships. A very big scholarship here in UT Austin is Texas Access. You do have to be a current UT student and or transfer student. Applications usually open January 1st and end or have a deadline rather of March 1st. Again, you have to be currently enrolled and attending UT Austin or you intend to transfer to U UT Austin fo um, following the fall. Current UT students and transfer students are not eligible for the 40 acres scholars program, but are for the rest. So that is an important note here. So Texas Access Scholarships has many scholarships and they're very specific. If you're a current UT student, however, you cannot do the 40 acre scholars program. That is only for those that are about to get into UT Austin. So I provided a link here over what the Texas X's page looks like. You do have to typically sign up. And again, it looks pretty similar to something we've already seen. There's uh, names of scholarships along with some description of who they're looking for or the qualifications. Um, so for example, let's just, this random one, Caroline and Platt Davis, Texas Leader Scholarship. It says for a deserving, there we go, for a deserving Hispanic or African-American law student. 
The scholarship will fund three years of study as long as the recipient remains enrolled as a full-time student in the School of Law and makes satisfactory progress toward his or her degree. So again, Texas Access is also another great resource, but you want to look well in advance. Um, Texas Access scholarships do open January 1st. Again, departmental websites are very helpful in finding more scholarships, specifically when I say department, I'm talking about your college. Uh, in this case, College of Liberal Arts, here's a screenshot of what we saw earlier. You also want to look at the Office of the Dean of Students scholarship opportunities here. College Board. Pearson Scholarship Index, AI, excuse me, AIE's Scholarship Database. So these are scholarship uh, databases that we've already mentioned or talked about. Uh, another good resource I don't think we've mentioned so far is Texas Comptroller, findaid.org. So these are scholarships, again, that most, if not all, current undergrads in UT Austin can start looking for. But what about those of you that are interested in study abroad? There are scholarships out there for those of you that are interested in studying abroad. A great resource to start with is Texas Global. There are many scholarships that we're gonna go over. The first one being the Gilman Scholarship which is due on March 9th, usually each year. And this includes people who are studying abroad for their May term, summer, or the fall year. Oh, and excuse me, and spring as well. Studying abroad can be a life-changing experience and the Gilman Scholarship Program provides up to $5,000 or 8,000 including the Critical Need Language Award for undergraduate students who are US citizens and federal Pell Grant recipients at two-year or four-year institutions. So you do notice here, hopefully, the specific qualifications you do have to meet. In this case, you have to be a U.S. citizen, and you have to be a federal Pell Grant recipient. In other words, you have had to receive financial aid. You can check out how you apply by going to the website here. Actually, I need to update that. Excuse me. But the Gilman Scholarship is a great and a very popular scholarship for students interested in study abroad. Another one is Texas Global First Abroad Scholarship. Uh, for this one, you need to apply by November of your freshman year. So if you have any uh, friends who you know of that are coming into UT Austin, this would be a great one. 25 students are selected each year to receive $3,000 towards a credit bearing or experimental learning opportunity abroad. UT University Leadership Network. So if you're part of ULN, I believe you can use study abroad for um, your what's called experimental learning requirement. You also wanna to speak to your ULN coordinator about that. UT Presidential Scholars, they can use up to 1,500 individual opportunity scholarship uh, awards toward their study abroad experience. Diversity Abroad. Diversity Abroad is a database you can use to find scholarships to apply for, specifically for first generation students. So. Ta-ta, most of you are first gen students. This would be a great one if you're planning to study abroad and are looking for funding. UT Austin Affiliate Partners. So they provide academic and career enrichment international experiences worldwide. And it looks like, if I stand corrected, a database as well.
And I did provide some links here over what the university has published. Um, so again, going back to Texas Global, you have all of the scholarships that we just talked about here with their links. Oh, and you also have Global Assist. And this is a also an additional database that will help you narrow down what scholarships you can apply for and when they are due. Here is an external scholarship. Some more external scholarships here. Again, you want to be sure that you start internal and then external. So going back to Texas Global, you want to start here if you are studying abroad and then work your way outward with these additional scholarship finders or scholarship opportunities. Now let's talk about fellowships and what they are. So fellowships are essentially a community where you get to do research and get funding for it. Uh, I did this when I was an undergrad here. Uh, there is the Undergraduate Research Fellowship, URF, which provides $1,000 in support for specific scholarly research projects conducted by full-time UT undergraduate students enrolled in any department. These fellowships are intended to cover costs associated with academic research, projects proposed and written by student applications and undertaken with the supervision of a university tenured or tenure track faculty member, lecturer, senior lecturer, or full-time research scientist slash engineer. Some restrictions apply. So with this specific fellowship, you do need to know these things. Before applying, you need to realize if you're eligible. For example, are you a full-time undergrad? Um, you need to be evaluated on your research and you do need to get approved. They have some specific um, disclaimers, qualifications you do need to meet. For example, if your project will use vertebrate animals, live or dead, human objects or data about humans, or any type of biohazardous materials, including, here we go, recombinant DNA, your faculty supervisor may need approval from the Office of Research Support, ORS, Please remember, if your project requires ORS approval, your supervisor must indicate compliance by certifying the commitment, sorry, commitment statement on the application form. Although final ORS approvals are not needed at any time you submit your application, they are required for the disbursement of URF funds. So I provided the link here for the undergraduate research program. And here are some more tips and tricks. You want to research funding opportunities and you want to get ready to write your proposal and you want to prepare the application and submit your proposal. So again, fellowships are usually for people who are interested in research. I specifically did the undergraduate research apprenticeship program uh, through the, I believe, Department of Government, if not, I'm sorry, it was actually liberal arts, it's right here. So again, it's called the undergraduate research apprenticeship program. I was a government major in liberal arts. And I did this, I want to say my junior, if not sophomore year. And I got a lot of research experience from it. And I believe funding that year. So you want to engage in those experiences, especially if you're interested in graduate school. Graduate school is going to want to see if you've done research prior. And this would be a great opportunity to gain that research. Again, these are called fellowships. And I would strongly recommend, especially if, in your, if you are in liberal arts, 
to seek this out. And again, I did provide the uh, link website here, and I will provide the link below in the description. So here are some more details about the specific um, undergraduate research apprenticeship program that we just looked at. Usually applications are due in January and decisions are announced on February. And the way that you get money is upon successful completion of the course and meeting other criteria, you will receive a $500 scholarship in a semester following your apprenticeship. Let's look at what specifically you expected besides research. Students' responsibilities must contain some research component. They are not required to write a paper to receive credit, though writing may be required as part of the workload. Students should not be assigned solely clerical tasks, such as photocopying or handling mailings. Although these tasks may be assigned conjunction with other more research focused work. So for example, when I was part of this program, I did research alongside a very talented professor um, studying Latin America. And what I had to do was build a database with all of these books that he wanted me to read and look for specific information that he wanted. So when you're doing this program, you're being asked to maybe read, make a database, sort variables, et cetera, et cetera. And here is the link to the application process. And I think the same link on undergraduate research fellowship that we had already looked at. This is a link to the scholarships and awards within uh, undergraduate research. So as you can see here, there are other ways you can get funding. Um, I have friends who have been a part of each of these and I have heard really great things about each of them.